Dr. Julie McCallan here with Cinegenics Denver. Are you struggling with low energy, lack of focus, weight gain, or poor sleep? My team can help you get your metabolism and hormones balanced and healthy. Call Cinegenics today, 720-387-3681, or visit our website at denver.cinegenics.com. 6 a.m., everyone, on a Wednesday, the 28th morning of July, 2021, and there's a good one. Wednesday weather, hot, dry, and 100 degrees. Tomorrow, Thursday, catch a break, sunny, 97 and on Friday, of course, the rain will start again in 95. Without further ado, one of my true favorite people, I am a fan, ladies and gentlemen, the return of John Caldera. Johnny C., my boy, good morning. I, I heard you say to Billy Thorpe, I was walking past the booth and I had a cup of coffee. And what did you say? This is a horrible, what did you say, a horrible hour? What did you say this is? It was like. Uh, I just said, I just said. It's early. <laughs> no, you're not. complaining. It's early. Uh, how you do this? I, it's it's so wrong. I don't know how I do it. So they pay me as my. You've done it for so long, yeah, Bill. It's just, uh, mind you, I have an aversion to morning people anyway. Yeah, you know, they're always so chipper and you don't. know. Good morning, and the <laughs> the, uh, don't, you know, the don't like breakfast. Them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. How are you? Let's talk and chat now. It's in the morning. Yeah, these are those guys. You know, these are the guys who like mow their lawn at six a.m. Oh, you know, you know and it, it, it's, it's because they, you know, it's cooler I always, in the morning. I was, well, I was, it's cooler. It's cooler. Cooler at midnight. Do it then. I was like those guys when I was drinking. <laughs> The lawnmower yeah. guy, <laughs> about you know, you're just getting in the door and they're firing up the lawnmower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one, and there was always that was a bird that would show up. You know, you always let your screen door open. A bird would be sitting there singing. If you could beat that bird, right. if you could beat that bird home, you had it. <laughs> that the lawnmower guy. Yeah. You, you had it. <laughs> Johnny, how are you, man? How you been? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm okay, man. For an old guy. Um, yeah. You wrote this. I, I got to bounce a couple other things off of you, but you wrote a great column, yeah. and and the explaining the Caldera's first political axiom. John, I wish I had to come up with this. There is nothing Republicans can't f up. John, yes. that's we, uh, Billy and I want to make T-shirts. But it's 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 true, and particularly in Colorado, and it's it's um, you, know, you, you can go back on how many times we've fumbled the ball on the one yard line. You know, it's just, uh, you know, how many times we've had, <clears throat> you know, put Dan Mays on the, <laughs> on the general ballot, you know, it's just, it's, uh, uh, it's just, it's just wonderful. Well, here, so here, let me retop, re- reset this. I think everybody knows Johnny, but the independence Institute, he's a radio talk show host at KOA and K Howie has his television show. And I just love him. He's, we've been friends forever and he's been through a lot and, He's one of the stalwarts of what we do, and we've just be, been, been very good friends since then. And he wrote a piece called "Looking 2022, Looking Good for Republicans If They Don't Screw It Up. And if they the, don't screw it up. The only one that well, – well, yeah, I'm sorry. You wrote about Hickenlooper, but you forgot and, – and, and I, I know it was not intentional, but what the Republican Party actually did to Tom Tancredo to destroy that hope. When Hickenlooper ran for governor, um, the Republicans had this lead, as you point, and of course they came in with a one-man band, Dan Mays, but they also did a job on John Hickenlooper. I mean, on, on John Hickenlooper on Tom Tancredo, and that's true too. So, well, you know, at the time, you know, so um, I, I, I guess my my frustration, particularly in the primaries. Um, it was Bill Buckley who said, I want to elect the most conservative person possible. You know, so, you know, the most uh, uh, conservative person who can win in the general. And somehow in uh, Colorado, we, we tend to nominate somebody who just can't win. You know, they, and they might sound perfect to, um, you know, the, the hardcore Republican uh, Dan Mays, if you remember, a million years ago, yep. sang sang the right song for a Republican. Oh yeah, but he was he was completely unelectable. In but fact, he was, he was he was a con job. You they, put, you, you know, you, anybody who anybody who did some background checks on him would find out he he had quite the colorful past. But remember, um, I mean, Mays Mays hated me, and you know we 
and he wrote a book once, and he said that I, I thought he was Hispanic. <laughs> That's why I didn't like him, which I thought was a kick. But, um, <laughs> but also, you remember, and you there was the you know the electable Scott McGinnis, who then turns out to be a very interesting character, sort of an under the table money taker. And so they they but, tr- they, they know, bypass. I understand that the 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 left the left already did their research on Scott McGinnis. Yeah. They um and you know uh, they because they think long term, so they don't wait until somebody wins the primary to to find out you know what they're going to run against them. And so they found all this yeah. juicy stuff yeah. um about him. And on the eve of the primary, it was the left who put in about a half a million dollars worth of anti-McGinnis ads yeah. uh, and messed in the Republican primary because they knew that if Dan Mays won, uh, he'd, um, he'd, he'd, he'd lose. And, you know, and sure enough, he, the big worry that year was he would get right. less than 10 percent of the general oh, vote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and if he got less than 10 percent of the general vote, um, the Republicans would turn into a what's known as a minor party, a minority like party, like libertarians. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, minor, uh, yeah. Um, They would they would turn from a um, a major party to a minor party, which means um, yeah. in Colorado law, all sorts of things funding. are bad. Funding, yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah all and, things are bad. But we later, uh, so we yeah. John Kildare is here. We later found out Chris Christie, the Republican from New Jersey. All those people, they shoveled money in here to knock Tommy, man. I, I, I lived it. I know it. I met Tommy when he decided to make that run. Mays hated us. Frida Poundstone put Mays in a hole. Um, I lived all of that. I think you and I were working together when that happened. And that's when I learned my yeah. lesson. That's when I learned my lesson of the Republican Party in the state of Colorado. And I have not been around them ever since. The, uh, and, and to Tom's credit, for those who, who might not know the story, so um, once it became obvious that Dan Mays couldn't win, uh, Tom uh, went to the Constitution Party and said, hey, if you, you know, knock off the guy that you've got running for, um, um, for, for governor, I'll run for governor under your ticket. And they were like, yeah, sure. And so uh, Tom said to, to Dan Mays basically, hey, if you pull out, I'll pull out. And then, you know, um, then the Republicans can come up with a brand new candidate. The vacancy committee can do that. Yeah, and, and there's no doubt in my mind, Tom was completely sincere in that. Um, and uh, Dan Wood, the, the point being that Republicans often like to choose somebody in the general that um, is unwinnable. You, you look at uh, – uh, Daryl Glenn, um, a few a few years back, great guy. I mean, just really, just a terrific guy, um, hardcore Republican. But you know, he he was a guy who right out of the box said, you know, I'm a hardcore pro life constitutional Republican. Which for you know Republicans are like, oh, that's awesome. But a hardcore pro life constitutional Republican is not the kind of guy who can win at the general ballot. Um, statewide, you have to you have to understand understand your market basically, yeah. and so Republicans often don't do that. John Caldera, sir. Yeah, John Caldera, Peter Boyles. I love Johnny talking about the Republicans. Um, you know, I, I'm in this conversation now. One of these young Republicans is stopped by the studio this morning. Donald Trump lost Colorado two times. Now the same faction says, "Well, we need a Donald Trump to run in Colorado." No, they don't. They need my my broken record. You need to find the Ronald Reagan character. We need to. I say, I'm not a Republican, but we need to go to this untapped world of the conservative Latino people, conservative African Americans, working men and women who have all the problems brought to them by Polis and the Democrats. But if they keep this stuff up that they're doing right now. And this is what I love the column about. If they don't screw it up, John Caldera is here, and his piece was entitled "2022: Looking Good for Republicans If They Don't Screw It Up." You're a bet. I said, if you were and, a bet. And by, by the way, yeah. In 2022, things should be very good for Colorado Republicans. 
uh, for for a lot of reasons. One, nationally, there uh, should be pushed back as there usually is a, a new president's first midterm. So there's going to be a lot of folks who who are, will be voting anti-Biden, um, but also we'll have new maps for the state mm-hmm. Senate and the state and the state House, and they will be better for Republicans only because. They can't get any worse. Uh, the the uh, uh, Colorado's House, for instance, is among the most most gerrymandered in the country. It's just it's insane. Uh, and the proof of that is over elections. If you add up all the votes for R's and D's throughout all sixty five House seats, uh, usually except for the last election, overwhelmingly. Republicans win the total uh, vote. You know, so there's like 50,000 more people voting for Republicans statewide, but still, you know, the the House has 17 seat advantage yeah. for Democrats. Yeah. It's because they're better at gerrymandering. It can only get better. And then I think lastly, the policies that uh, Polis and his uh, socialist uh, uh, progressives in, in charge of the of the state are just damaging our economy left and right. And I think unemployment is still going to be an issue next year because you cannot put in so much – you can't beat up employers as much as Polis has done Mm -hmm. without it. We went from the number one uh, state for unemployment, that is we had the least unemployment, uh, we rocked it down to fourth from the bottom. We're now back up to, I think, like 35th, Mm -hmm. so we're still – you know, we're 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 in the you know, bottom third of of a bad employment, and it, and the policies that he's passed are just getting started. Agreed. It takes years for them to to really get into effect. Um, this this terrible Family Leave Act, which is a payroll tax, is going to make unemployment even even mm-hmm. worse. That doesn't start until next year. So you know, everything looks good for Republicans. So, you know, my gut tells me, so how, how, are, they, how are we going to screw no, it up no, this I, I say the same thing. Our guest, the one and only John Caldera in Complete Colorado, did a great piece entitled 2022, Looking Good for Republicans. If they don't screw it up, John, they'll screw it up. I mean, it's like they'll it, – it's, sometimes it's called the Barry Goldwater model. I've read that history that, you know, Barry Goldwater sang that, that song that, you know, like the Valkyries, you know, they wanted to hear it, the siren song. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, sure. And it was, but that's not what. And and so Lyndon Johnson becomes landslide. Well, he picked up landslide Lyndon in Texas, but uh, you know. And I watched this stuff, and I watched it again and again and again and again and again and again. And right now, the Republican Party said we should go hardcore right. Well, hardcore right hasn't won in how long, John? Uh, in Colorado, yeah. you know. Just keep it, keep in mind, for instance, up in the Boulder area, it used to be a Republican uh, held but how territory. Long? How long has it until, been until um, until Watergate? You know, so yeah. it, it's been a long time. We haven't had a yeah. Republican governor since Bill oh, Owens. Owens. That's and right. So we're, yeah, we're we're talking. You know, my God, what fifteen, yeah, sixteen, yeah, eighteen yeah, years yeah, now yeah. Um, before and it, it can happen again. And let me bounce this off you again. Ones that should have won. There's no question in my mind that Cory Gardner should have not beaten John Hickenlooper. It was the worst campaign I've ever seen run. It was the most milk toast, lay down. And now, of course, Cory's got himself a gig. He's not a lobbyist by name, but he's a lobbyist. He's making a bunch of dough and all's well in the world. I can't. I can't how about when they ran Walker Stapleton? Now, that was a candidate. Um, I mean, that's the Republican Party of Colorado. So. Where is, and I go back to this all the time, where is this Reagan-esque character, you know, and, and how can he rally people uh, or she rally people t- to her or to him to turn this idiocy around? Your thoughts? It's, it's not an easy answer. But let, let's remember, and, and by the way, I, I, um, uh, I'm much more forgiving about Cory Gardner than, than you, but I, I understand the point you Please. make of... of Oh, Johnny, please. Well, remember this. Let's give give Corey some due in that 
uh, there was no guy who was going to beat uh, uh, Mark true. Udall, and he, and he, pulled, he hey, pulled it off. Beating Mark Udall was like stepping on baby chicks. Mark, Mark Udall was dead. No, no, it's not. Yes, he no, was. No. Come on. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll argue that one over. Uh, no, we won't. Uh, it's, it, it, over, be, over a beer sometime. Uh, well, well, that's the over. Po- the, po- but, the point being is where are, where are the, the, the new Republicans? Where are the women Republicans? This, it is really time for um, um, uh, for women to lead the the party because we want to reach into our, the the toughest demographic for conservatives are suburban women, and it's it it would be good if uh, we could get more in into office. Um, the, here's here's my worry. You, you think about what we've why Michael Bennett is still in office. Oh my God. How is it that Michael Bennett is still in, in office? You talk about a guy who is the accidental Senator. It's got to be Michael Bennett, the luckiest guy in Colorado history. Um, you know, he's got that Thurston Howell kind of attitude and he's still, he's still in office. Um, r- ridiculous. Here, here's the other thing. Let me give you a perfect example. The Colorado Republican Central Committee, there's about 517 mm-hmm. or so folks, mm-hmm. um, they're going to vote on whether or not to do away with the primary. I think this would be devastating. So, <laughs> so they'll do it. People don't know. <laughs> so they'll do it. <laughs> well, God, I hope. Yeah. I, so yeah, they'll do so it. They'll yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah and what, it, what it means is that um, uh, only the, if you go to the caucus system and then go to the assembly, Next year, that's the only place somebody can uh, uh, win the primary. So, in other words, about a thousand people next year would choose who represents Republicans all the way down the ticket. Uh, instead of having a regular primary where we all get a ballot and uh, we can we can decide it ourselves, this would be terrible because people who who petition on, and I think Tom petitioned on as for Congress the first year he did that, mm-hmm. um, would, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be able to do so. Furthermore, it would take about a million Republicans in the state and say, we don't care about your voice. Um, so, but because we're going to choose but you got, But you got, the, you got those people, that, you got them anyhow. John Caldera's here. I mean, you, there's a voting block of Republicans you have no matter what. Uh, just like you know the right. old line of the yellow dog Democrat, you have those people. You have to win over here, and as long as you the have people, to, yeah, you have to win in the gettable middle. The middle, that's right. Uh, and this is why you know, um, Bill Owens ran such an incredible campaign yes, back in yes, 1998. Yes, he did. And I remember to this day, it was you know, his architect was was uh, Dick Wadham, who right. uh, understood these things. And there were three things. It was like everybody gets three things, which is if you elect me governor, and I remember this to this day, uh, we're going to lower taxes, we're going to widen I-25, and we're going to fund charter schools. And what was magic about those three things is they were things that uh, voters in the middle wanted. Republicans were fine with it. But uh, it drew a um, distinction from the Democrats. So it wasn't guns, abortion, and you know, uh, capital punishment, oh. um, even, though, even though Bill Owens was very good on those things. Uh, he didn't run on that because that's not, get, but who that's was, not going to get you the people in the middle. Who was his opponent? Uh, first time around, it was Gail Shetler, right. and he won by a mere 8,000 votes. Yep. He, he, uh, it was it was a nail biter. I remember uh, yeah, uh, yeah. the evening when he uh, uh, when he won. Yeah. You know, there was there was a real question who won yeah. that night. But you know, and Bill Owens and I have had some disagreements since. He he was a really good governor. He ran this state well, and he took a lot of heat. Owens took a lot of heat, but I thought he always did. You know, and then scandals happened. Oh, and in the, 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 the same way, he he and I have. Uh, some policy differences, and we still argue about them over beer, and it's wonderful. But um, you know, the difference was, yeah, you're right. He, because he grew up in uh, the system, he was a uh, state oh, yeah. house oh, rep yeah. and I think oh, and a senator, treasurer, treasurer, yeah, treasurer. He, right. Yeah. He he learned how that building works. Mm-hmm. The guy before him, Roy Romer, yeah. um, did not like his politics, 
Master. Uh, man, that now, guy ruled with an iron fist. Master he knew Rich, how to right. run the machinery. We knew that. Uh, right. Dick Lamb, you know, and Dick Lamb is just a spectacular guy. Love, and I, love um, Dick Lamb. Love Dick Lamb. Yeah, love, yeah. And again, he knew how to run the system. And then we've had, we've had these, uh, we've had uh, a Ritter, sweet, wonderful guy. Please. Uh, knew nothing about, knew nothing Please. about how to run the machinery. Uh, you had Hickenlooper, who, uh, um, Please. Um, uh, who was people want to have a beer with him, but Please. he just let his people run the the machinery, and they were not that good because he wants to go out and have uh, have drinks with his friends. And you know now we've got Polis, and sadly, he knows Polis knows oh. what he's he knows what he's Johnny, doing and and it's bad. Uh, the John Caldera's here. I'm just the biggest fan in the world. I, I said this the other day. We're talking about running the city of Denver. Old man Webb ran Denver. Like him or not yeah. like him, old man Webb ran Denver. It was his city. John Hickenlooper don't have a clue. Michael Hancock's worse. Yep. When we look at, and I'm not a big Bill Ritter fan for other reasons. Same thing is true. But now, Jared Polis, hands down, the smartest politician, smartest elected official the state has right now. Hands down. He's the smartest. Yeah, and, and he's able to get away with what's, what's you, amazing about Jared. Amazing about Jared. I've known Jared for a quarter of a century, and um, um, is that he knows better. He, he's, he understands policy, and he understands, I believe he understands that what he's putting his signature on he wants to be is president, Johnny. bad Johnny, for Colorado. He, 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 but he wants to be president. He, he has this, yeah, he's got this talent to, to, he's so quick on his feet mm-hmm. when arguing, you know, and so he tries it, like a Bill Clinton, he, he, makes you think he's secretly on your oh, side. Yeah. So he's talking to the business guys. He talks business. If he's with the Enviros, he talks to the mm-hmm. Enviros. If he's with the Libertarians, you know, he talks about uh, whatever they like. You know, And it's just, they, he's got it down. But what he has put his name onto, the people he's put into regulatory positions are destroying I the agree. economic engine of Colorado. And it's why we are we will drop from first in the nation in uh, employment to 35th, but, and that's not going to go away soon. Uh, it's going to linger because of his policies, and it's going to hurt I, people, particularly on the bottom end of the scale. These guys are stair steppers. Before everything happened, to Owens he was presidential timber. That came apart. This guy is presidential timber. When they pulled that All Star Game thing, did you notice? You didn't, the, the name Michael Hancock never appeared. This was a Jared Polis, Jared Polis and Major League Baseball, and I don't know who else is involved, brought the All-Star game here. And at that moment, by the wave of an imperial wrist, the COVID went away. We took the masks off. We're going to have to put them back on. Bars opened. Bars could stay open. Hotels could be open. People yeah, could and, and, the, and, the, and the vagrants somehow disappeared, disappeared. We, around. We talked uh, about it. <laughs> around Coors Field. They vanished. Yeah, and, and that was that was the power of Jared Polis. I mean, don't that wasn't Michael Hancock. Michael Hancock, please. But when you look at this stuff right now, and it comes full circle, and I love what Johnny says, if the Republicans don't screw it up, and what they're going to do is they're going to screw it up. And I agree with you 100%. The one guy that's takeable is Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett, that's a takeable guy. But don't kid yourself on, on Cory Gardner. They're, the ads that could have been run, he never once mentioned Sanctuary State, giving driver's license to illegals, all the things that Hickenlooper did, the road home, ending homelessness. I'll give you a list. Not one of those ever appeared in an ad. Not one time, one place, one where. You could have beat this guy like a redheaded stepson, and whatever the reasons looking, were, they chose not to. Looking forward, looking forward uh, to next year, Republicans are in a great position. Agreed. To to take back a lot of what has gone bad in Colorado. I agree. Um, and it, it, and so we've got to be careful uh, not to screw it up. We need to avoid Caldera's first political axiom that there's nothing that Republicans can't f up. And if we do that, if we uh, you know, bring people who are electable through the primaries, if um, if we if we don't um, if we don't close the primary, in other words, if we don't get rid of the primary, yeah. and you think about it, there are 500 people in Colorado who are going to make a decision yeah. 
whether or not uh, Republicans should should be like I, a libertarian I, I agree. and not have not have a hmm. ballot for no, the primary. I, that would be just devastating. I've been I mean, I've been I've been calling the, I've been calling these people commissars. I mean that's it's the Supreme Soviet. Remember there was the the common turn. And the common turn made decisions, and that's what the Republican Party, if they get their hands on it, that's why these guys are these are operationics. They're, and if they get their hands on it, it's worse. So, can they screw it up? Uh, by the way, uh, when when the kids go, when when's everybody go back to school? That's coming up too, isn't it? Oh, too soon. Yeah, too soon. Um, um, uh, yeah, best dad. I've got a, I've, I've I've got a, I've got a daughter going off to college, and what? I. I I I'm losing my my uh, my stuff over. Where, where, where's she going? I'm, Johnny, where, I don't know. Where's she going to go uh, to school? She's 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 gonna go uh, she's gonna go down to to Texas and oh, right. uh, and yeah and so yeah I've already got you know the suicide hotline to, to my refrigerator. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I I got uh, I got John, it all. I'm uh, I'm trying to prepare you. for myself. I love yeah. you. Hey what's, man, take what, care. What's your, what uh, what's what's her major? She declared a major. Uh, business. Smart. You know, she, <laughs> not her old man, said, right? She, uh. Not her old man. <laughs> she said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to spend all that money and, and have a liberal arts degree like no, you, Dad. Like you, Dad. I, I'd like to get a job sometime, yeah. Dad. As we so, go out the yeah, back door, awesome. I've known this man so long, and we've been through so much together, and he's one of the great fathers. He truly same, is. And he's a so I, you know, I feel, feel the same way. You've been, uh, you've been really active in your family, and it's, uh, it's uh, um, you're yeah, good. We, we, we're now at that age we can go, I can remember when. <laughs> we're talking when about you. that this morning. What brand of cigarette? Did you ever smoke cigarettes? Not that, in case my mother is listening. No, I never smoked what, cigarettes. What, that would what, be awful. What, no, did, but of, of course, you know, as, as, a, as a teenage boy, you sneak out and right. try the cigarettes. Did your dad and my mom? mom used to, my mom used to smoke these things called True Blue. You know, hmm. That was her brand, True okay. Blue. Right. And um, it had this. You know, cool symbol, mm-hmm. but uh, I think it was it was. I like how there were girl cigarettes and boy cigarettes. Oh, absolutely, it a difference. Yeah, yeah. A really tough. Yeah, my, in Pittsburgh, some tough. My shape. Virginia Slim. Oh well, there. Yeah, there'd be these tough girls from down by Bessemer, and they'd smoke camels. <laughs> and you knew they were they were like they were road chicks. Man. You don't they mess, they yeah, don't mess with those girls. Oh, leave them alone. Yeah. John, I love you with all my uh, heart. All right, man. Will do. Hey, Be take safe. care, man. All right, three zero three six nine six nineteen seventy one. Our masks coming back. Isn't it like cigarettes? 100 degrees today. Stay here. ANUS. Morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 28th morning of July, 2021. 710 KNUS, Denver's talk station. 100 degrees, the high today. Sunny, 97. Tomorrow, 95 on Friday. Uh, the, uh, the Delta turning. Is another wave coming? Will mask be mandated? And get your thoughts. Also, in, the, um, in two days, four people were killed in downtown Denver in, by shootings. And two women and a 16-year-old boy among three of the four. And, of course, it's great downtown. Remember when we talked about the state of the city address? Did, did you hear Michael Hancock talk about any of this? Only t- did he ever talk about sobriety with all these mooks that are living on the street? The killings that are taking place? N- not a word. As I said to you many, many times, he's not, he's not a shot caller. The last shot caller that ran the city was Wellington Webb. And the man who was sitting at Colfax and Broadway, Jared Polis, is a shot caller. The TNV, last night I watched, and I, I, want to, I don't know what people want to say about Simone Biles. I, it's, great, it's a great sadness. I, I love her. I think she's tremendous, and she's had some sort of an emotional break. But I watched it, and, I, and then I watched this new young woman. What's her name? Carrie, I think is her last name. And then I watched some of the balance beam stuff. That is amazing. But I'm not like this Mr. Olympics guy. But TV, and then what was on last night? Uh, a Bugsy. The original one, uh, you know, that it was. it's not even played out right about Virginia Hill and Ben Siegel. But that was my go-to-sleep movie. And I get all the stuff. And I do, and I keep telling people, Streamwise Solutions. Got it two years ago. And high-speed Internet's humming perfectly, and I'm only paying for the shows I want to watch. And StreamWise has been saving me two Gs a year. I can't tell people. Four grand. I mean, remember, no more hidden fees, no more equipment rental fees. You own your own equipment. Higher quality, better television for so much less. Stop overpaying. Don't be a stacker. Stacker is a word that someone's paying for cable plus streaming services, overpaying for the Internet. They stack you up. 
Don't be a stacker. Call Streamwise Solutions, 303-794-8600 now. Brian's the guy. Visit the website, get streamwise.com slash stackers, 303-794-8600. Go online, get streamwise.com slash stackers. Save money with Streamwise Solutions. Don't be a stacker. It's the best thing you can do. It's tremendous, man. 303-794-8600. 303-794-8600 today. Are the masks coming back? And last night I was show prepping and trying to think out the show, and it dawned on me about cigarettes. And those of us who are old enough, and my first hour was just jammed up with people talking about what brand of cigarettes they smoked and how many people sent in the, the brand of cigarettes that killed their parents or killed family members because they smoked. Um, 1960 and four, the old guy, 19 and 60 and four, the Surgeon General comes out and says, these things are going to kill you. Here's Pete Boyle's <laughs> cigarette in my mouth. Didn't stop me, boy. I ended up with bypass surgery, and I ended up with all kinds of stuff, and cigarettes were much a part of that. And now we have now people talk about sec, secondhand smoke. What's secondhand smoke? Is, is secondhand smoke? Geraldo Rivera comes out and says, unvaccinated or arrogant and selfish, no shirt, no shoes, no vaccine, no service. Now, now, Peter, I wanted to back no. up just for a second. You were talking cigarettes and things. And we talked a little bit off there as far as the cigarettes. Uh, you know, my parents, well, my mom gave up smoking before I was born, and my dad smoked cigars. And I can still pick out certain scents of certain types of cigars. But the thing that fascinated me as a kid was how good the cigarette marketing was. That's great. They, they were light years ahead of so many other products and so many ideas they were experimental they were people that started things like you know oh we're gonna have you know the, the travel bus or we'll have the suites mm-hmm. at the concerts yeah. we'll have you know the one thing that i still remember i still have some of this crap at home i've got uh, the marlboro miles where you, and they still have the miles on the side of the packages you'd collect the upc codes and then you'd send them in and they'd send you free stuff sure. and it was this is i always thought was hilarious is it was all this outdoor adventure gear for smokers Oh, no, Hiking I mean, backpacks no, no, and, and, and tents yeah. for, for, for smokers, because the one thing smokers do a lot is hike and lots of outdoor well, exercise. I still, I still have the backpack that I got in college by scraping together all the miles that all my friends were, all my friends were smokers. So I just would go through their yeah. apartments and, you know, with a plastic bag, throw all the packages, you know, they didn't throw away, and then tear off the miles and send them in. I still have a beach towel. I've got a couple of things. I've got a bottle opener. Yeah, that, and, and that was great marketing. Because you you were invested in you know in saving for something that was atta- attached to the brand, and then be- you became a brand ambassador, and it made you brand loyal because you're trying to get X, Y, and Z. Listen. They started off with characters, you know the, the you know Marlboro Man. You had the you know the cool camel. They were they were really well, really ahead remember, of their time. They took the uh, the music from the Magnificent Seven. Yeah, and that became dun 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun dun. That's the Marlboro music. Yeah, but it was more it was greater than that, and I've read different things about it. It was true brand loyalty, but what we later find out is if you began on a certain cigarette, very I mean, I was one of those guys that you you were you stayed with the brand because you were addicted to that brand. Yeah, yeah it, and, it, it, everything uh, else tasted different. Well, and they put things yeah. in the paper, they put things in the, in the tobacco itself. They used chocolate sometimes. They yeah. used it's it's oddly mint. enough the one that I would use, the, the weirdest consumer product that I think is similar right now, well maybe two, is either yogurt or cottage cheese huh. because it changes based on taste and texture so much from brand to brand. And I would make that analogous mm-hmm. to cigarettes yeah. that the taste and the texture change so much from brand to brand. Yeah, you became very brand loyal. And it's interesting. It's like religion. 99.9% of people are, under our exceptions, are the religion of their parents. Yeah. And it's people, the first ones you tried, first ones you bummed, first ones you snuck out sure. of the and, purse or, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And a lot of us, I started to smoke when I was 13. And I started, I said, I started to have my first drink when I was 13. I tried. Right around 13, I tried to smoke. I, because, you know, it looked cool and I had, you know, yeah. kids around the neighborhood yeah. were smoking. Um, but I was a soccer player at the time. And so I think I had two cigarettes over the course of a week and went to practice. Like, I had one cigarette, you know, with a friend of mine by the alley at, like, 2 in the afternoon, went to practice at 4, and was like, hey, hey. I'm like, oh. oh, this is crap. I'm, like, I'm not doing this again. This is just I was stupid. one of those guys that I never – there was anything I never tried to win. I better never do that again. <laughs> I, I was – I liked most stuff that I tried. But I guess the point of this is, is are we doing this again? Um, is the government telling us something – and now we have the unvaccinated, and the, the, the statistics are pretty brutal that 
almost all the people that are in hospital right now yeah. are unvaccinated. Now, and, and I'm looking at that a little bit with the uh, idea of you know people worried about mask mandates and yeah. worried about vaccine mandates yeah. coming forward. And what I'm worried about is this, is that we have a whole bunch of people out there that are talking about their freedom and their individual oh, choice. No. And, and I believe in that. I, I strongly believe in an individual's freedom and our, and our freedom of choice. But part of that agreement in society is is that we are going to make choices that are not just safe for yourself, but safe for your family, well, safe for your friends, and also safe for your neighbors. That's part of why you have this self-determination. That if we don't, if we're not allowed that kind of self-determination, if we don't make those right choices, then you have an authoritarian again, government that walks in and says something. So the problem I'm having with this whole idea about people not willing or not wanting to get the vaccine because they say it is their freedom, if we need to tramp this out, you understand that for the social good we need to get vaccinated. So what I have a problem with is mm. that these people are waiting for an authoritarian rule, which makes me wonder, are you really, really defending your freedom? Is this really about your freedom of choice? Or are you just waiting until the government says you have to? Well, because that, that's where we're going. And that's where we're going to go with this. So all these people that are running around and think this is about their freedom and think that they have the, you know, they've got their profile pictures up at the Constitution. Mm. And they're saying, I'm doing this based on my self-individual mm. choice. You're not protecting the society, your individual choice is going to lead us to an authoritarian choice. Well, that's the problem. I mean, don't you see again, this? Is it? I, I, I don't understand. It. Is it no different than me in 64 when the government said this is going to kill you? And I said, screw you. Give me another cigarette. Um, and and I've been reading um, and I'm not an expert. I don't plan on sitting down and having scientific debates. But, I'm you know, I'm an average intelligent guy and I've read a bunch of books and this variant, this Delta variant, from my reading, is really no different than the original COVID, except it is more susceptible. In other words, it is easier for you to get this one than it is the last one. And the thing about these little suckers is they morph. They change. The, the job that it has for itself is to replicate itself, to make itself continue and there have been viruses, you know, prior to the dinosaurs. There are people I read that argue they may be, these things may be the first forms. There's people even argue, are they life? But their real job is to make more of themselves. And um, so they, they, they lift weights. They buffer. They, um, you put up, you know, the, the science puts up. And remember, it says Donald Trump's vaccine. And they put that up. And, and, the, little, and, and, the, and the COVID hits it and says, hmm. You know, we can't get through this, so let's find a way around it. And comes the Delta variant. And there will be one after that and one after that and one after that. It very well could be like the flu, only in a more deadly situation. This will be with us forever. Or it may go back to the reservoir as SARS and MERS did. There's no knowing. Anybody that tells you they know what's going to happen is not telling you the truth. I have no idea. Anybody that tells you that they know what this, this variant is going to do, they're telling you a lie. I don't know what the answer is, but I was thinking about cigarettes. And the vaccines have to do with what? I don't know. But there is, seems to be this, um, again, the divided country. On this side over here, I believe this. And with that, I believe this goes with it. On this side, I believe that. And this goes with that. And um, I see this coming back. And it's all right. Right back with your calls, 303-696-1971. Hi, the lines are jammed up. It's a Wednesday morning, 28 July, 2021, 100 degrees, hot and dry, 97 tomorrow. Are the masks coming back? 710 KNUS, we go to Brian on line one. You're on a radio show. Good morning. Hey, Peter. This whole thing for the better of the society, That's it's called socialism. Now let's think about it. Mm. If the people would quit eating so darn much you know maybe we should start fat shaming people because it seems like the virus is killing a lot of those people so well, you could go down a bad road i, I don't think they they equate i just don't think i see that equation well who does it affect peter well it, there's plenty of people like stefan he's very young and good shape and he damn near died i don't know what to tell you but now what if he would have took the vaccine and he would have died what well, if he's we, one no of the but, but I, actually one of the things depression. with stefan one of the things with stefan and I asked him on the air, and I said, you know, oh. about it, and he didn't know how to answer. And the answer is, I'm sure. I mean, I, I guarantee you, if Stefan, uh, Stefan wishes he'd have taken the vaccine. 
But that, well, I don't that, know about that. Does well, I don't either. Now? He I don't know. I, no, 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 he has the antibodies. And my understanding, however, is this new variant, and this is why, and I, I'm in over my head, but this variant, this Delta variant, is, makes it, you, it is almost identical to the, to the initial COVID, but it is easier, for, you are more susceptible to it. How's that? You can get it easier. Well, well, that's how viruses have always worked. They of get course, I just said that. I just said that. A virus's job is just, to stay alive. I just said that. Peter. I just said that. That's why, so, the, that's why the flu shot changes every year because most places, and in fact, China is the place, in, generally in, um, in these giant um, swine or pig communes, is generally where that, that variant changes shape every year. And some years it comes back. And it's a killer. In some years, it comes back, and it's not as bad, but it, it does yep. it does morph. So, do you think that they should mandate that uh, your colleague Stefan get a shot, even though he has the no, antibodies? I, I don't mandate anything. That's not the point. This is like smoking in some ways, and eventually, um, you know, you used to be able to smoke on airplanes, smoke in bars, smoke in restaurants. Um, yeah. Do you do you have children or grandchildren, Brian? I do. Do you, do you want do you want people to smoke around them? No, I don't want him to smoke, no, but in a would, society, would you say something? If, would if somebody lit up a cigarette next to one of your little kids, would would you ask them not to? Or I would move. It, yeah, you, or would you or either either move yeah. or ask them? Would you say something to them about the smoking? I wouldn't make a big deal. I'm I not at your, you know your dog. Smoking. You dog me all the time. It's a pretty simple question. If I was with my grandson, and we're sitting at a ball field or something, and you know, somebody lights up a cigarette, I'm going to ask them to put it out because I'm not going to move. But that smoke, is not, that smoke isn't good for my grandson. So I'm going to say that. Now, what are you going to do? Okay, I'll do the same thing. But okay, then there you, know you, what, go. There you but go. You know what, Peter? If you're at, most places are non-smoking. So if you, if you put yourself in a situation that you know is a smoking area, no, but, but, really but, but the government, the, the, look, out, look, right? the, the city, the state, the government, like the drinking cup, they made a decision. And they said, I was early on, I said this, there used to be a town square with a pump with a drinking cup on it. And the drinking cup was on a hook. And everybody that came through, they called them drummers. They were salesmen or the farmers or whoever it was, the store shopkeeper. Everybody drank out of that one cup. And then they realized that was a, that was a very sick thing to do. So smoking in public became the public drinking cup. Now you can't do it on airplanes. You can't do it in movie theaters. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's smart because second, secondhand smoke, no matter how, whatever you want to say about it, secondhand smoke has proven to be an unhealthy thing. I'll let it go with that. But if you remember, in, in America and in Europe as, as well, there was something called the public drinking cup. And people realized and that's really how paper cups made their bones. But, it, you know, you don't want a public drinking cup. I don't want somebody sitting next to me firing one up. And I'm, listen, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I don't know if there's a recovery for cigarette smokers, but I was three packs a day when I quit. And and I'm telling you, this is, I don't know what the truth is here. And I'm, not, yeah, try, I'm well, not trying to tell you the truth, but I can look back historically and I can see things and say, we better, we better smarten up. Well, you're, com- you're comparing apples and oranges. No, I'm not. I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm talking here, about viruses. What your neighbor has. Viruses and germs don't change. You got the vaccine. What do you care what the oh, next man, guy See, has? how ridiculous are you? All right, man. We're coming back on the other side, 303-696-1971. This is why talk radio has gone into what it's turned into. It's going to be 100 degrees and very dry. The government started making decisions about smoking. And they said you can't smoke on airplanes. Remember, we used to smoke on airplanes. can't smoke in bars. No, you can't do this. You can't do that. You like that? You like that idea? You could walk in and sit down in a restaurant with your family and some guy in a booth and there are two people, three people, four people in a booth next to you, you got your grandkid with you, light them all up. Everybody lights them up, blows them over on you. No. We decided that's the public drinking cup. And the, re- the retort of don't worry, you have the vaccine is quasi-ridiculous. Now, Geraldo Rivera comes out and says, unvaccinated are arrogant and selfish, no shirt, no shoes, no vaccine, no service. What is legit is that about 90% of the people in hospital now with the return of the Delta seem to have not gotten the vaccine. I'm not a scientist. I'm a reader. And that's the end of that. 303-696-1971. Is the mandate coming back? I don't know. 
I'm just let's talk about this logically. There one time was something called the public drinking cup. We used to let people sit next to each other and smoke cigarettes. Next, my dad would, my mom and dad would be smoking. Windows rolled up in the old car. Everybody's in the car. You know, we're going to grandma's. I bet they had, well, my dad was probably driving and drinking beer, but what? They smoked three, four cigarettes each. By the time we got to grandma, we're in the back seat, man. We're hooting it in. It's not right. Now, you do what you want to do, but it is what it is. It's a Wednesday. Is it coming back? 710 KNUS.